This video is going to take a look at how we can use that chi-squared distribution to conduct a hypothesis test to see how well a sample fits a distribution. For the goodness of fit test, we're really checking to see if someone claims a distribution has such and such a percent in each category, we're going to test if those percentages are correct. We're going to test if the claim distribution matches what our sample results are. So the null hypothesis in all of these cases will always be that the population fits the distribution described. The alternative hypothesis is that the population does not fit the distribution. And similar to our test for independence, this will be a right-tailed chi-squared test with the number of categories minus one degrees of freedom. Let's take a look at an example. Last year, a labor union listed the five categories of most importance to their members. This year, they conducted a sample to see if the distribution still holds true. We're going to test this claim at the 0.01 level of confidence. So you can see the five categories with the percent last year that supported it, and the number this year out of the sample. Let's go to Excel to calculate this. I've copied the data here, and you can see I've highlighted the number this year column. That's the number that came from the sample. That's really our observed frequency. What we're missing for a chi-squared distribution is the expected frequencies. The way we can calculate the expected frequencies is we'll consider the total of the observed and the percents from last year to see what should have happened. So if I say equals sum, add up the observed from last year and hit enter, we see 500 people were interviewed this year. So I'm going to, under the expected, say equals, click the percentage, times the total frequency. Actually, I'm going to just type in the 500 because I don't want that cell to move when I drag the formula. So we'll say equals to the percentage times the total of 500. And we see we would have expected 20 to say vacation was the most important. Doing the same thing all the way down by clicking and dragging the dot, we end up with the expected frequencies for each categories. To calculate the chi-squared, remember we have the formula that says we take the observed minus the expected squared divided by the expected value. Let's do that in our formula. We'll say equals, open the parentheses, click the observed, minus, click the expected, close the parentheses, squared with shift 6 to get our little caret, then the number 2, divide by and click the expected again. Now I can click that bottom corner and drag that dot all the way down. We know that our chi-squared is equal to the sum of all of those numbers. Equal to the sum, and then I'll select all these numbers. We also need to identify the number of degrees of freedom. Remember, the degrees of freedom is the number of categories minus one. We have five categories, so we have four degrees of freedom. Now, to calculate my p-value, we can say equals chi sq dot gist dot rt, because the goodness of fit test is always a right tail test. I'll click my chi-squared value, comma. I can type in the 4 for degrees of freedom, or I can just click that 4. Close the parentheses, and we get a p-value of 0 0.00682. We wanted to test this at the 0.01 level of confidence, and we see that p-value is less than 0.01. That means we're going to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. With the goodness of fit test, the null hypothesis was that the distribution, that these percentages were correct. But because our p-value is small, we reject that and conclude that distribution, the percentages, are incorrect and they no longer hold true. That's our chi-squared goodness of fit test. So hopefully this video was helpful to you as you look at goodness of fit, as you conduct a hypothesis test 
to see how well a sample fits a distribution. Good luck as you work on your assignment.